Hello guys, I got something final in mail that I was waiting for quite uh, quite a bit. So, I don't know if I mentioned in one of my videos, but my Godrak 952 soldering station crapped out and um, part, the soldering iron part is crapped out. Uh, um, hot uh, air gun still works and soldering iron turned out to be too hard to fix. First of all, I burned the uh, iron because, not I, it burned the iron and probably some of the MOSFETs is crapped out and, and probably took some some other chips because after fiddling around for quite a while and try to fix um, one of the um, uh, elements which actually drives uh, the voltage 26 volt for the Godric station. I turn uh, turn out to be it's it's too much work and it's awkward to work on. And she's like, screw that. I'd rather get new soldering station with much better tips. And this time that's gonna be T12 based stuff or T15. So here we are. So this is gonna be one of those um, Chinese soldering stations which gonna drive um, uh, those uh, Hako clone. T12, T15 soldering tips. Okay, so let's see. You, you already in the package. This was just like this in the box. Uh, there is a wire, I mean, power cord, uh, you know, North American style. And here, let's see what's here. And it's sort of mangled a bit. And uh, by the way, when they sell you this station, they sell you with the K type, which is the which is the like a blade one and I asked them to do me BC1 I need the conical one uh, so um, yeah kind of like this one probably much more use it's conical uh, I don't know how you call it anyways I don't know the name of this it's T T12 BC1 OCIO nice all right so looks like this thing is sealed let's on oh no it's not sealed it just looked like here we're, is it a kit or something? All right, it's uh, like all this stuff. Okay, and what do we have here? We have uh, an iron and we have a thing. It's, or it's a fuse. What the hell is this thing? It's a uh, SW20. Dong dong, looks like uh, it's a little fit for this little thing, and we have a station itself. So this is the temperature. I know is it uh, the pot like six pin and the ground is this? Yeah, it goes like in here, goes in here. Perfect. What do you have here? It's a soldering station. Sorry, soldering iron looks just chintzy a bit but whatever let's just open this up okay already started with disassembling all this stuff i want to see what's in there and how it works it's very similar to uh, the other the godrak station just different cartridge can i push this out? can i i can push this out okay here we are so this is how it looks like uh-huh oh I see now okay so this is the how, how the connection thing looks like contacts for the soldering iron right on there is a three contact we're gonna talk about this a bit later and there is a, some sort of switch probably like a tilt switch which gonna uh, kick in and out when you are um, working with the soldering iron or putting it to the rest Okay, let's take a look on this uh, tip what I got here. So, the what's cool about this particular T12 or T15 tips from Hako that they are integrating the cartridge, heating cartridge, and the tip itself, and thermocouple is inside. We have only three contacts here: one, two, and three. So this is all grounded, so that's going to be sort of ESD protection. Those two is a plus and minus, and they are actually uh, thermocouple is coupled together with the heating element. So let's them, let's measure the resistance. I have uh, my multimeter handy right here. Let's measure resistance one way or another. So 
So this way it says like sorry 9 ohm or what 8.7 and let's do because I think polarity matters opposite pretty much the same okay well I thought polarity matters but looks like it doesn't the ground is not connected to anything it just the ground so sorry the the yeah you see so okay 8.9 ohm all right okay let's remove all this paper so it looks like this switch is just a spare switch kind of wondering like why would they need to include the spare switch here but spare um tilt switch so okay so this is how it works this thing kind of slides in here so uh, those two goes to the ground for ESD protection this one goes to, to plus and this one goes to minus that's very nice and nifty kind of way oh my god at least the PCB is bent hope it's gonna work <laughs> properly uh, here we are so this is as simple as it can get it's a very nice way of attaching this um, uh, s uh, the um, uh, soldering iron tip to the uh, to this pencil right so just put let's put it together so we don't post we not don't have to actually open it this way so we're just supposed to take this maybe first do this take this like this click and then yeah, wrong no, I was wrong am I okay so this is the how, how the connection thing looks like contacts for the soldering iron right on there is a three contact we're gonna talk about this a bit later and there is a, some sort of switch probably like a tilt switch which gonna uh, kick in and out when you are um, working with the soldering iron or putting it to the rest okay let's take a look on this a tip what I got here so the what's cool about this particular T12 or T15 tips from Hako that they are integrating the cartridge heating cartridge and the tip itself and thermocouple is inside we have only three contacts here one two and three so this is all grounded so that's going to be sort of ESD protection those two is a plus and minus and they are actually uh, the thermocouple is coupled together with the heating element so let's dem let's measure the resistance I have uh, my multimeter handy right here let's measure resistance one way or another So this way it says like sorry 9 ohm or what 8.7 and let's do because I think polarity matters opposite pretty much the same okay well I thought polarity matters but looks like it doesn't the ground is not connected to anything it just the ground so sorry the the yeah you see so okay 8.9 ohm all right okay let's remove all this paper so it looks like this switch is just a spare switch kind of wondering like why would they need to include the spare switch here but spare um tilt switch so okay so this is how it works this thing kind of slides in here so uh, those two goes to the ground for ESD protection this one goes to, to plus and this one goes to minus that's very nice and nifty kind of way oh my god this PCB is bent hope it's gonna work <laughs> properly uh, here we are so this is as simple as it can get it's a very nice way of attaching this um, uh, s uh, the um, uh, soldering iron tip to the uh, 
to this pencil. All right, so let's just put let's put it together. So we don't post we not don't have to actually open it this way. So we're just supposed to take this, maybe first do this, take this like this, click, and then, yeah, wrong. No, I was wrong. Am I? Yes, this is so much better. So this is okay, now I can solder. So here we are, so the pencil with tip is soldered, sorry, put together. Okay, so in anticipation that I'm gonna get um, this T12 sort of soldering iron or compatible pencil, I also got some other Chinese um, brand uh, tips. This one slightly different from that one, as you see, but it's like this is the brand Quico, and it is T12 tip as well. It's tip. ILS, T12 ILS, I don't know how it's difference, but they're a little bit more sharper and probably for the fine design to be used for finer jobs. Goes here as well. Let's check the resistance. For giggles, I don't know if they are compatible or not. Well, this one, this one shows 10 ohms. Not sure how how important is this. Okay, let's do a different way. 10 ohms. Hmm. 8.5 10. Who cares, right? Okay, so I have two identical of this kind. So they were super cheap, like dollar pop or something to this extent. But I was this is I splurged. So this one is legit stuff. So yeah, I splurged. This one is a bit more um, expensive and a bit more legit. So this is actually genuine Hako and I got them from Hako USA. I, uh, they were shipped here in Canada. They were like $10 each in this kind of uh, ballpark range. And let's open Tef. But oh, by the way, and th this one, uh, these guys are different. I don't know why they called like that not T15, uh, but they're apparently compatible. But we'll take a look at this later. So so uh, T12 and T15 essentially the same um, soldering tips. I think T15 is for North America and T12 for Asian markets, if I'm not mistaken. So let's open this much beefier sort of uh, dude over here and take a look at that. Weight wise, the, uh, I would say this one is even heavier actually. <laughs> Weird goes in and let's measure the resistance of this guy let's put it the same way as another one this one oh. 9.9 10 ohms okay so this one close Okay, well, seems like it's all good. Okay, I'm gonna just leave it here. Uh, for the giggles, I opened this one, which is supposed to be compatible, but they are designed to some sort of uh, 2017 uh, type of pencils. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, different is, but but physically they are identical, unless there is something. Well, cartridge is different over here, seems to be, but like, let's take a look at the, the resistance. Unless there is a thermocouple inside, it's completely different and like it coefficients and things like that. But we're gonna see. It has 10.9 10 ohms resistance, so yeah, who knows? Seems like it's okay. All right, so what we got from here. So we have several tips over here of different kind. Two of them genuine Hako, two of them are uh, some 
Shenzhen market stuff uh, but they may just work as, as, as well like without any issues so but that's not the most imp important and interesting part here so the most important interesting part is here right so uh, this is business end this is power end so let's take a look at the what do you have here on the power end so this dude is uh, it's not nifty little box it's not heavy at all and in the back very nice and beefy kind of power connector i love this one it's all black anodized whatever uh, casing uh, on the front here we have six pin plus whatever outing shell connector some uh, screen and just a knob over here to turn your uh, voltage sorry voltage to turn your temperature up and down says is this safe let's see how is this safe is is this safe this means that this ground pin is supposed to be connected to the body all the way through the soldering iron okay let's take this dude apart i've zoomed in a little bit to have better view and let's go so construction probably will be very simple I really want to see that power supply, what's in there, yeah, I'm just curious, can you... Alright, now when we removed a whole bunch of screws, let's just take a look what's in there. So it looks like this is just um, very simple aluminium extrusion, you can, um, those cases are relatively cheap, pretty cheap, you can get them anywhere. So what do we have here? There are two separate things. So one is a power board, which actually uh, supply all this with 24 volt, I suspect. And another one is controller board, which is over here. Okay, we can disconnect this for now, right? You can disconnect just like that. Okay, so power supply. Let's take a look. At, for the very first glimpse, it's just not too bad. Uh, Protection-wise, it has... Um, uh, I think it's a fuse which wrapped into some shrink, uh, shrink wrap just to make sure it's not gonna blow up all over the place there is a um, NTC thermistor for inrush and and what is this MOV um, LC filtering two 400 volt caps sorry for yeah 400 volt caps so they are completely separate They're nothing gonna warm them up it's enough distance the clearance over here is an not current resistor or something uh, for dice for rectification uh, some more dice over here okay um, it's not a diet what is that Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is a power transistor. This is a MOSFET. Really hard to read up. What is it? I will provide the specification. So on a secondary we have uh, transistor is whatever. Uh, sorry, transformer is whatever. We have um, filtering out all output filtering here. here. Yeah, actually they have some insulation slot, which is kind of cool. Uh, 35 volt 683 filtering caps on output this is a, a diode on a diode. looks like a diode here it says well it says d2 so it is a diode all right so yeah this thing this pipe is supposed to provide 24 vo volt i'm not sure how my how many watts or how many amps but okay uh, so it's kind of hilarious by the way here this grounding pin is actually soldered right and all this stuff is just uh connected so it's, uh, it would be amazing if they would just connect this with some sort of connector but nah, not gonna happen so on the controllers business over here we have a, a dangling in the breeze um real-time battery or just backup backup battery to back up all these uh, settings uh, I guess that's as simple as it can get. So this is uh, Cortex M3, I guess. STM, STM, uh, STM32 FQ72 CB16 or something to this extent. So this 32 micro from uh, ST, it does the job. I think it's more than enough uh, for such task. Uh, by the way, over here there is some um, ground RX, RX TX 3.3 volt. By the way, the battery is, I guess, all this run is 3.3 volt, which is good. Um, so I guess this is possible to hack around. You know, maybe it's possible to flash new firmware through this 
Uh, there is a buzzer, buzzer uh, supposed to, I think this one of those guys is supposed to be op amp in order to actually um, sense uh, or amplify the um, uh, uh, thermocouple um, voltage, uh, you know, which is necessary to work. To, uh, to amplify in order for a micro to actually do something or actually sense the uh, voltage differences. Uh, on the bottom of this board, there is like another. another the, the stupid thing is that this is all kind of soldered together, and this little screen is, is actually glued to this board. Okay, I can't unplug this, but I don't even know if I can. If I can unscrew this one. It's kind of funny. I don't know how that's supposed to work. Hmm, okay. Uh, potentially, this was actually inserted and soldered, so I have to unsolder all this stuff in order to actually get get through, uh, remove this board. But there is not much going on on the backside except there is one eight-pin jobby over here uh, and or um, OLED screen. That's it, and few passives. Uh, one pot. Uh, that's it. That's actually pretty simple as uh, as it can that. Technically, you can just have this if you have a um, proper power supply of a sort. Uh, like for example, if you have um, good high quality 24 volt, you can just ditch all this schematic and just use connect this to your proper power supply, and uh, it's just gonna work treat. Anyway, so this is all we have. This uh, doesn't look too bad. Looks like um, it's grounded. Uh, let me actually buzz to see if it's really grounded. Okay, well, it is grounded all the way, so it's not bad. But the case is not grounded, so case is just floating because nothing touches the case and there is insulation like everywhere, so case is just floating in the air. So let's put it together and power it up. Okay, I put it together and I think it's time to power up the beast. Error! Uh, menu. Menu is Chinese. How do I... That's not funny. Okay, I was able to figure out the, the language. Language was essentially... You have to hold it for a second the third or second from the bottom options over here option and you can do other things here so but uh, so i picked that um uh, pick the language now you can go and do the settings uh, to your heart content there's quite a, a lot of settings the other th uh, um, the thing i want to just mention that it is hardware version 3.1 and software version 7.1 m i don't know what that really means but maybe we can actually get new firmware for this old dude so but let's go to the point to the to the actual to the soldering business back to the soldering business i will connect soldering iron i will try to solder something all right guys we have to we power this puppy and it looks like it has 340 degrees set and let's do well let's do 300 precisely 300 okay so looks like this thing is already up to temperature and let's see how it's gonna hold uh, against this wet pod over here I don't know, looks like it's okay. Looks like it's alright. How about solder? It does okay. Well guys, I'm not gonna go into like temperature tests and like do thermocouples and things like that. First of all, because I don't have any thermocouples. Secondly, looks like it's just gonna do the job I needed to do. It smells the solder, it's actually have it kind of have decent thermal capacity okay it's gonna work it's gonna work for my liking or for my needs um, there is nothing here to add I know there are many many people already review this sort of um, little mini soldering station this sort of like a t12 tips and I think there is I won't be able to add here anything new 
I just decided to uh, share with you my experience on disassembling this puppy and maybe if I find out how to hug this dude I will also share this with you but so far I'm really happy as I continue my tinkering with proper soldering iron and another thing I might want to mention this can be bought for very very cheap and if you're gonna have two of them or three of them and then if one of them are gonna crap out you can just continue working so you always have a choice to buy something super crappy which barely op well which operational if it's gonna die you're gonna get another one or you can spend 10 times of this like for example 500 dollars for good soldering station and you're gonna know it's gonna work for you probably 25 years so this is your choice absolutely your choice so if you're on a budget make a cheaper choice if you are want to make sure they are all you 100% up and running any time of the year <laughs> so you probably have to invest in the proper tools but i'm happy with what i got here so thank you guys for watching see ya next time